comment on there. Tell them we're trying to. All right. Can you see it? Yep, it's on, finally. I don't know why it's telling me that. It's been like reconnecting and disconnecting. Sorry, guys. We've been having struggles with our live. We're on Wi-Fi, you know, should have no issues whatsoever. All right, but... well, if you're still here, I'm glad that you're around. Um, we're going to get started. So I'm using Sweet Pickets Milk Paint in O Olive. I already have it mixed up in this old jar here because it comes in a powder form. So I did one part milk paint to one part um, warm water. And then I also put extra bond. This particular piece, I don't, I should preface this by saying I don't do custom work, but my good friend Norma has been begging me to paint him forever and I love buffet, so I'm painting this buffet for her. She doesn't want it to be super chippy, so I've added extra bond to this, so that way it doesn't all chip off. And if you want to buy this milk paint or extra bond, you can go to jamierayvintage.com. I also have these round zipper brushes there. Zeb and I are going to be tag teaming. So we already stripped this top and we put a coat of gel stain on it because there was a lot of damage. And we're going to put one more coat of gel stain, but not while we're live because it's, it's a little fussy. So I don't want to do it on, on camera. Don't worry though, I have footage of all the repairs and things that we yeah. did on this. So we have next week. I'll show you guys sometime next week and on, can, on so that. So like we repaired the feet and then Zeb, you want to oh, show yeah. the doors? So I did a couple different types of repairs on the doors. Here, I'll show you close. So right here, this is this is Bondo and I showed you, in, well, I haven't filmed how I did that and I'll, I'll go over that. And then this, this one here was completely broken off. So I just made a plastic piece with uh, uh, resin, and so that's going to be that part. Once it's painted, you won't even be able to tell it's different. Um, Heather, I got it from my friend Norma. It's her buffet. It's not mine. You know, we, we keep saying we don't do custom work, and then these people are like, I'll pay you a ridiculous amount of money to match what some pieces you already did for me, and Jamie always says yes. No, so. that's not the case. Norma's my <laughs> friend. She wanted me to paint it before I stopped. And I love buffets. And she's like, I won't be picky. I'll just let you kind of do what you want to do and do your thing. And I was like, all right, Norm. We're going to do this <laughs> together. So anyways, I'm painting in O Olive Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. She found this um, color on my website and really liked it. So I went ahead and ordered it. And she doesn't want the... Hardware painted, so that's what I'm doing. I'm taking. Yeah, picky, picky. I always paint the hardware, <laughs> but Norma didn't want the hardware painted. I was like, all right, you get one request. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. It's all right. We're just taking it off, and then we'll just paint the front fronts and then put them inside. I don't typically paint the inside of cabinets unless they're in poor shape. These are actually really clean, so we will wipe them down and I'll polish them up, and then some of the natural original woodwork will be inside. The reason, one of the main reasons I don't paint the inside is if it gets painted like multiple times over the years, it gets kind of gunky and who wants to strip the inside of a cabinet? So unless it's in poor shape, I don't do it. Zeb, when are you gonna start painting? When I get the hinges off. <laughs> you can see this color covers pretty good. Usually the first uh, coat of milk paint is a little thin and scary, but this O Olive has really great coverage, so I think I'm going to move the camera a little. Can you guys see better now? There we go. All right. Some questions. I'm going to look right now. Okay. Love that color. Yay. Yeah, it's like a really... Do you I would recommend say stripper or sanding when you want a new stain? Uh, I, rep I recommend nothing because I don't stain stuff. We we prefer sanding. I have a video um, called Sand It or Strip It. We've used several different types of strippers and all, almost always you have to sand after you've done the stripper anyway. So and we just we it's just usually see and gross. So yeah. I don't I don't like sand whole pieces of furniture down and restain them. I'll do a top because it's flat, but I won't do a whole piece. I've heard about sandblasting recently. And I wanted to look into that because I think that would be all right. Or you could use like a heat gun like we did the other day. So Heather Reeds, you asked, do, did we have to seal first on, on what, on this? We what, what part? We're hoping there's no bleed through. Maybe. That's oh yeah, if you're asking about bleed through, hopefully there's none. It's pretty old piece, so there's a good chance it's been oiled a lot and that might cause some I bleed through. I did clean it. Okay. I cleaned it really good before we got started. Um, but 
because of the color that we're using, I don't think bleed through is going to be a problem. If this was cherry or mahogany, I probably would have lacquered it first. But if we get bleed through, we'll just spray it with shellac and put some more good old milk paint on it. I have a whole quart of this color, which is way more than I'm going to need for this project. So. Stephanie, it is milk paint. It's O olive is the color. So there's a bunch of different brands of milk paint out there. Um, a true milk paint is not something that's pre-mixed. If it's pre-mixed, it's not real milk paint. You might as well just call it chalk paint that they call milk paint or acrylic paint or whatever because true milk paint comes in powder form because it actually has milk in it. So it's only good for so long. I refrigerate mine for up to a week, but mostly I just try to mix up just what I think I'll need and not more. That way I'm not having to save it. Hey, Gabster Nurse from New Zealand. That's a long way. Yeah. What was I watching the other day? It was from New Zealand. I don't know. You're watching okay. sharks in on Discovery Channel. Well, I'm watching Channel, BBC, right? but oh, no, I go. was. <laughs> something that I used was like made in New Zealand. I don't remember what it was. I'll have to look it up now, but I thought, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm not even sure what New Zealand is. Is it by Australia? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> good, good, good. I didn't do well in geography in high school. Zeb's much more book smart than I am. Stephanie Coat wants to know your opinion on uh, chalk painting kitchen cabinets. I think that's a great option. Um, if, if anybody saw, I recently posted a video from Fairy Chalk Mother on their high bond primer. If you're going to use post chalk paint. Post it on paint, Facebook. Oh, sorry. I posted it on Facebook because it's a Facebook video. So go to my Facebook page and look up the video for high bond primer and um, watch it because if you're going to use chalk paint, I suggest no matter what brand, using the Fairy Chalk Mother High Bond Primer. You want to clean your cabinets really good, and if they're kind of shiny, maybe sand just a little bit, then chalk paint, then primer, or sorry, then primer, then chalk paint. So I said that backwards. So the first step is going to be the clean, the light sanding, primer, chalk paint, and then seal with something that's going to keep them from getting damaged. I do not suggest wax. I suggest like a polyacrylic water-based if you're doing white paints don't use regular polyurethane it will yellow all right so a couple comments here um don uh, i'm gonna go through them and then you can answer them all so don asked if you're going to use a brush to poly what kind do you recommend we use a wooster brush on that oh but we just got we just got that foam wooster oh, brush yeah, and we're gonna did. try it out i don't know for sure if it's awesome oops i didn't dip it far enough I don't know for sure if it's on. Sam, you could like swirling over there. Get that straight. I'll get it straight. Um, but we'll, we're going to try out the new Wooster foam brush and, and let you know how we like it. Maybe on our, next week on our next live, we'll do that. Next week, I'm going to be doing the Deseret uh, Industries Riverton Drift Store grand opening. So I will be a little tired, but we'll still try to do a live afterwards. Um, so a couple more questions here. Are we going to use dark wax and... You said you cleaned it first. Do you clean it with TSP or just wipe it down with soap and water? I just wiped it down with soap and water. Um, if it was like really greasy, I'd use TSP, but TSP can be kind of toxic or it's bad for your hands. And the nice thing about, so I put Extra Bond in this milk paint. Extra Bond is like, for milk paint, Extra Bond is like what High Bond is for chalk paint. It makes it stick like crazy. If it gets on your skin, <laughs> good luck getting it washed off. Pause that. If you have high bond in there, I think milk paint is probably the hardest paint to get off. Like No, extra your, bond. Oh, extra bond? Yeah, so extra oh. bond is <laughs> what we put in our milk paint. Yes, and high mind. bond is what we use before we chalk paint. But either way, if you have extra bond in there, it's really sticky. Hey, don't give me a hard time. You called a color, a completely wrong color that we didn't even have in a video earlier. I had to edit it out. I can't be responsible <laughs> for the things I said when I was hungry. <laughs> I haven't eaten yet. Uh, the beeswax was from Australia that you used. Oh, yes, yeah, I knew. It was from New Zealand, I thought. Or is it from Australia? I don't know. It was from somewhere over there, and I remember thinking, those are my people over there making me beeswax. It's awesome, and it smells so good. Zeb walked in, he's like, why, how come it smells good? I'm like, um, because I use beeswax. All right, so I've got this this drawer painted pretty good. This door. It's a door. Door drawer, you know, they both open. Potato. And the good thing is, 
until it's sealed, you can get it off with water. So if he gets a little bit of that paint on the wrong side of the door, once it's dry, we'll flip it over and we'll clean it off with water. So that way we get a nice crisp line and then we'll seal it and the sealer will make the paint stick. And we don't, we, we, we avoid taping off if we can, if at all possible. I taped off the gel stain, but that's because I did not want to sand this top down again. It was in pretty rough Well, it's shape. a veneer, so this veneer probably doesn't have too many more sandings in it. Yeah. You've got to be careful with veneer because it tends to be thin and you can't just go to town on it when you're sanding. Yep. And I'll show you guys on Instagram and Facebook the final project. I'll probably have it finished on Monday when I finish the gel stain. So Heather says she tried to do a uh, tabletop with only sanding, and she says it looks awful. I bet it was that yellowy colored oak to start with. She whatever they, sand yeah, whatever they cover those with, you gotta sand for days on those if that, that was the type of table it was. It takes a long time, and if you don't, it looks, you can tell, it has like light spots in the stain where you didn't sand deep enough. The stripper will help with that, but you're still probably going to have to go back over and sand. But yeah, well, if, if you if it's solid wood, then bust out the belt sander. I did a video a while back where we verified that it was solid wood, and we belt sanded it in the direction of the grain. That's very important. And then we took it down. We you know we did the grits. We went from low grit to high grit, and we got a beautiful finish. So it can be tricky. When I first started doing furniture, sometimes I thought that I was all the way down through the grain. But then when I would take it and um, put a damp rag over it, I would see that there were still some shiny spots, some areas where it just wasn't quite sanded all the way. So you just have to be careful. That's usually the, like, the main problem. Stripper usually isn't the answer. It just needs to be sanded more. So Sherry asked, what kind of top coat is best for an outdoor piece that is durable? Um, so there's marine varnish. You can buy it on Amazon. It's pretty expensive, but that's probably the best, especially if it's going to get really wet. But our front door is sealed with spar urethane. You can buy it at Home Depot, and it's a water-based outdoor sealer, and it's held up great. Other than the dings from us pulling furniture in and out, we haven't had any chips in a year and a half. We painted it with chalk paint with the fairy chalk leather that we sell, and then we sealed it with that spar urethane, and that front door has held up to some harsh Utah winters. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> That's what I would suggest. Either a marine varnish that you can, or marine seal that you can buy on Amazon, or just the spar urethane at Home Depot. Do, 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 do. Let's see, Malika, is that how you say your name? Am I saying that right? I don't know. People uh, can she's, never say your name, so that's uh, right. <laughs> She's got some good comments here. She says she uses, uh, she if she has that issue, she sprays with shellac. And then she goes back over the top with gel stain. Oh, yeah. So if you have, especially like if you have a table where it's not solid wood and there's been some damage like bubbling, usually I sand it down smooth and then I'll put like a traditional stain on it. Then I seal the whole table with one good coat of sealer. And then I go over the top of that with gel stain. And usually that will fix the problem. It still won't be perfect, but it, you can really fix a totally damaged top. The biggest thing is like, Brand is important. When I first started using gel stain, I was using Minwax, and it's not nearly as good as the General Finishes gel stain. And I don't get paid to say that because I don't sell General Finishes, but I'm just telling you it's better. And it's General Finishes smells better. You gotta be careful with that. <laughs> it smells too good. You could, uh, you could, you could go wrong with that. <laughs> Who cares? I don't even understand the statement. Like, you're gonna eat it? Yeah. Only if I was really hungry. I did use some beeswax uh, as lip gloss. It works. How do you it's feel about putting a stencil on a piece like this? Um, I don't feel good about it. But <laughs> <laughs> Jamie doesn't like to stencil things very often. We're I, going to be doing some some uh, transfer stuff here shortly on furniture. But... Yeah, so I'm going to be working with Iron Orchid Design. I've signed up to be a retailer. And so we're going to be doing transfers and some stamping. I would not stencil a piece I'm like this because there's so many details in this. Like this raised area here, there's a, you probably can't see it, but there's a detail here, along here. It's got a lot going on. And when we lightly distress it, all those details will come through and you just don't need it. But if you've got like a flat surface and you need to add something, absolutely stencil away. We want to do a, a big old image transfer on a flat dresser. We thought that would be fun. 
I'm just not very good at stenciling, so that's kind of a Zeb department. <laughs> he has more patience for, for things that require detail than I do. Don't tell anybody, my attention to detail is not awesome. So just in case you guys are noticing that I've only painted two doors while Jamie painted this whole other thing, it's because I'm fielding comments, all right? It's also because I'm much faster brushing. Yeah, a lot of times in the videos when, when like it's going fast, I haven't sped Jamie up. That's just how fast she paints. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to put some paint in this lid because I got it over here. So. You guys want to see a table leg that I made? It's what I've been doing all week. I can go grab one. I have it staged and ready. I think I've, it was easier for me to give birth than it was for you to finish that table. Hey, Jacob. Glad you had good fabric shopping. Ooh, Jacob's on. I've known Jacob since he was three years old. He was a sassy little three-year-old. See, I've known him since he was eight. Did we determine that it was eight? <laughs> I don't know. I've known him longer. I win. All right, Kimberly has a fun question. This is kind of a hard one to determine. She wants to know if we were going to be selling this, how much would we be selling it for? $695. There you go. That's for our area here in Utah. That's, I mean, this one here, if we were to just go buy it, it'd probably be what, about $350, $250, somewhere to in there? just go pick this up? Yeah. yeah. You're probably talking, unless you get a smoking deal, you're probably talking $250. That's before paint or I, well, that repairs or anything. Well, that I wanted today was $325, and it was like on its last leg. So yeah, buffets are not cheap in Utah. They're hard to find. So this would be $695 for this buffet in my area. All right. Table leg time. So, so this is the leg of the table that I'm making, and it's massive. Can you see it? I'm trying to see there. Show them but, how, like, next to your leg, how big it is. <laughs> uh, so this one here, I, I, I was going to, I would have loved to have left this the raw natural wood, but our customer wants it painted. So what I did was I went in with um, Bondo, and I filled in all like the cracks. It had a split through here that was just in the wood. And I filled in all the cracks and stuff. Bondo for this is probably the best thing. It adheres almost like a glue and it hardens really, it really well. Rock solid. And if, but, you, if you had not, if it wasn't a solid piece of wood, it wouldn't have split. But because it's solid, as soon as it gets exposed to the air, they split sometimes. But that's what I've been doing. I've almost got the table pieces all made and ready to put together. <laughs> it's a monster table. But it's nine feet long, 40 inches wide. I took the paint. So. I see you took the paint. I was looking for it. I'll be back over there in a minute. You can it's just okay. I'm just going to dip my brush. And dip your brush in my paint. It's getting low. Oh, you've got the blender ball in there still. Yeah, well, I only mixed up <laughs> maybe a third of a quart. So. But you, I don't want to have too much mixed up. I already said why, because it only keeps for so long. Sheila says she's having a blast painting Chippy White Farmhouse. Learned so much from us. Thanks for watching. We try to be helpful. <laughs> I think sometimes I'm confusing because I do things like, sometimes people think that when I do things, it's like the only way to do it. And then I do it a completely different way. And they're like, wait, you did a different process. I'm always mixing things up depending on what I feel like. And there's only one way to find out if it's going to work. And that's by doing it. So. So that table leg was, uh, it was pretty heavy. It's white oak, and it probably, even turned down like that, it probably weighs about 60 pounds. Yeah, it's a monster. It's almost as much as my firstborn child. I'm making it so that the top comes off, so that uh, we can easily move it in and out of the house. Well, I say easily, we can move it easier. I'm going underneath <laughs> to paint the inside. So you talk to these people. Have you ever painted an antique end table with leather on the top? And if so, what did you paint the leather part? Oh, um, yeah, well not an end table, but I did a navy blue desk and I just did milk paint and I put and I put um, extra bond in it. I used Sweet Pigeon's milk paint in navy blues and it was great. It crackled a little because that's what milk paint does, but the paint did not come off. I just sanded it smooth and it was great. I've also painted <sighs> I'm gonna readjust the camera so you okay. can see Jamie around the corner here. I don't know, watch out, pull my shirt up. Keep it PG, <laughs> keep it PG. I've also painted it with chalk paint, but it's just been a little bit longer. But if you go on my Instagram feed, scroll through till you find the navy blue desk, that desk totally have a leather top and we milk painted it 
We used extra bond and then we sealed it with polyacrylic. Turned out great. So Heather, just so you know, this oak table, I sourced this wood from Texas. My, so I didn't laminate the, uh, the table legs. They're solid pieces of oak. I don't think they know what laminate means. I didn't glue the pieces of the leg together. It's all solid. It's not glued pieces. Normally you glue turn. and clamp. They, we've got yeah. videos on that. Normally you glue them together and then turn them so that you can get a big piece. But these are solid oak. And because of that and because of the type of wood and how thick it is, because you can get like three quarter inch wood down at Home Depot, but this tabletop's gonna be almost two inches thick. Um, and so with two benches and the table, the total cost on this particular one is 3,000. Ooh. Yeah. That's actually kind of a deal for the white oak. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can't even get it. Like we only got it because his dad milled it. For I us. tried sourcing like big pieces of wood, like oak like that, just trying to find some because my dad brought it up to me from Texas. Like they made a special trip to drive all the way up there. It's like 23 hours one way. And, and I have a video of us unloading it and stuff. So you get to see that, but I haven't had time to edit it. <laughs> it's been a busy week. Um, the kids are on fall break. I mean, that's just like taking up our whole life. Basically. Yeah, the kids being on fall break is really slowing things down in this table build, but I forgot what I was talking about. It's getting late at night. And I'm I don't know, <laughs> but I'm just down here painting. Oh, so I was sourcing wood, and the only thing I could find that was even close to that size, because that's a seven inch square piece of wood, was uh, salvage wood that was all splintery and, and broken up from like old barns and stuff. Yeah, so. who wants that? Well, and she wants like kind of a little bit rustic top, but not the legs. She wants it a good blend, so the legs have to be smooth. Can they even hear me under here? Do you guys see me? Can you guys hear Jamie? She's I'm like down there. underneath on the back side here. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you gotta get down at the level with the paint to get it. Here, on. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it, the camera, and give you guys a close up pan. Uh oh. Okay, well let me get up. I think it's all painted. The first coat is done. No, I touched it. <laughs> All right, we're back. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so here's you kind of the... Uh, here. We're going to do two coats on this at least, but this is what this is looking like. What's going oh, on? we just lost everybody. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Are they even still there? Yep. 39 people watching right now. Okay. So Jamie's going back over this. How long are you? You just fixing what I did because you don't like what it. You missed. I didn't miss anything. You what are you talking all about? Cracks. How long what? <laughs> yeah, the top is stained. It's general finishes. What's the color on this, Jamie? That is nutmeg. It's general finishes gel stain and nutmeg. We're going to do another coat so that it covers up some stuff. I don't know if you can see it real close here. The veneer had a crack and chip. We just kind of sanded that down versus because I don't. We don't put veneer back on. We don't that do that. That is not so. a Jamie Ray thing. All right. Are there any more questions? Um, look at the phone there and see if there's anything new. <laughs> Marilla Sewer, I just caught you guys live. Woo, I feel like I've learned so much. I appreciate the breakdown of the white paints. Oh, you already read that. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything new. Nope. All right, guys, we've got this coat on here. Make sure you go to jamierayvintage.com to buy this paint. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing that, but YouTube, we do get paid monthly from advertising revenue. But really what pays the bills and allows us to continue to make all these videos is all you awesome people, and I get, and I know a lot of it's coming from YouTube because I get messages from people saying, hey, I watch you on YouTube and I ordered your paint. When you order my paint or my t-shirts or whatever you order from my website, it helps support our family and gives us more time that we can make more videos and help you. Um, so there was one more question, but I can't, I, I forgot it already. If anybody else has a question, ask me out before we're out of here. Yep, we're about ready to go. Um, do you ever paint upholstery? Um, I don't because I can upholster cheaper than I can paint. I have painted leather, like that leather chair that I did. I've got a video, it's probably what, four or five videos back, maybe more. Um, it was the first one that you kind of did that boho yeah, style. Yeah, white drippy leather chair. Leather, I don't mind painting. But um, like regular fabric, I don't enjoy it. Um, I just recover it. And I've got videos on upholstering. You can use chalk paint, you can water it down. Debbie Beer from Debbie's Design Diary did a velvet couch. So look up Debbie's Design Diary 
and she shows you how to use her paint to paint a couch. Yeah, that's a bare spot. I haven't painted over there yet. What did you <laughs> Just on the right front leg there. Where? Um, and then... Uh, I have my glasses on because they were glaring. What brand of spray painter do we use? Just the Harbor Freight one? Yeah, the Purple Harbor Freight one. It's usually between $14.95 and $20. And then we hook that up to our Husky 60-gallon air compressor. You can get away with an 8-gallon. We used an 8-gallon for like a year. And we painted a lot of pieces with it. But the 60-gallon sure is nice, especially... If we're both using it at the same time. And last question, Sheila, you get it. Your favorite type of upholstery for farmhouse decor? Um, my favorite type, like, I love to use drop cloths, grain sacks, plaids, and, like, French country toile fabric. Those are, like, my favorites. And anything, like, that's got, like, a stripe to it, like a ticking stripe, those are all good farmhouse fabrics. And then, real quick, why do you spray paint some but brush paint other pieces? Um, well, when it's dark and cold, we have to brush. That's the thing. Um, it depends on the finish. So if I want a really smooth, smooth finish, then I'm going to use the spray gun. Or if I'm in a hurry, I'm going to use a spray gun. But if I want texture and an artisan finish, then I usually brush. And now that we, we're getting into like colder winter weather here in Utah, I'm going to be brushing a lot of pieces and that's why I'm glad that I'm not doing custom work anymore because I can brush to my heart's content inside the house and just keep on selling. So hopefully that answers your question. Oh, and milk paint, you can't spray milk paint. So if you want milk paint, you got to brush it. I'm going to figure out how to spray it. I'll figure it yeah, out for you guys. supposed to be able to spray it, but the gal that makes my milk paint, Sasha, has never done it successfully. She's like, I've tried, I've used different things. Sticks really well to metal. So any paint sprayer with metal in it, you just can't spray it because it's going to stick to it and then get clogged. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.